Hello, welcome to Soundbridge. In this video, we'll show you some of the new features of the 2.2.0 beta version. Now, before we start, please like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you get notified every time we publish a new video to YouTube. To jump right in into these new features, the most noticeable one is going to be if you open the new Soundbridge with the example project, you will notice our new zoomed out track view. Now you can change the size of every track by dragging its bottom edge. Or you can multi-select a couple of them, or you can also use the control shift and the mouse scroll to change the size of all the tracks in your sequencer. Hopefully this will remove a lot of scrolling up and down to find different elements and tracks in your project. Now let me switch to the main mixer and I want to show you that collapse state of tracks. So if I collapse one of these, just this one, you will see how much more information we have. In the previous version, you could only see the gain fader and the name of the track. Now we have added the panning, all of the basic controls that you have on the tracks anyway. The sends as well, audio inputs and outputs, MIDI inputs and outputs, and we have the fold and collapse buttons. So basically you have all of the controls in this collapsed view. We are hoping this is going to allow you to see many more tracks at the same time when you're mixing, but it's not gonna rob you of any critical features or basic functionality, especially with mixing a project with a lot of tracks. But this is not the end of the graphical changes. Another thing we wanted to change was this, how group tracks and their children are represented. So if I expand this group, you will see that all children tracks that belong to this group are now graphically represented to fall within it. And you can see that if I maybe group this one again, you will clearly see what this new group actually contains within itself. I'm gonna group it again and again, just a couple more times, and you can see that this is graphically much better presented. We hope that this elegant solution will make things clear. Now, if I switch back to the sequencer, you will see that in the sequencer as well, we have the same representation and you will see the same thing in the mini mixer. Another thing that can maybe save you space is that we can now hide all the return tracks using the default shortcut, Alt plus H, which you can change, of course, in the preferences, shortcuts. You can find that option right here, hide return tracks. Of course, the return tracks are hidden in the mixer as well as the sequencer. Right here, no return tracks, and I can just bring them back just as easily using the same shortcut. Another feature we're really excited about is regarding the parameter changes. Imagine I have a couple of tracks like this selected. At the same time, if I change anything, they all react. For any of the parameters that are present, if I have different gain values like this, their movement is going to be relative to each other. But if I double click, they reset to zero. The same can be said for panning. So if I did that with the pan, you can see that it's all relative changes. If I double click, they all reset to zero. Same goes for the sense. So any continuous control is going to behave just like that. On the other hand, for the switch parameters, the following is absolute, meaning that they all take on the value of the track on which it was changed. So if on one of them I turn off the arm, it turns off on all the selected tracks. They all absolutely follow. Alongside all of that, we have added an exclusivity keyboard shortcut. So now let's say if I had multiple tracks soloed, at the same time, I can just hold control, click another one, and they all disengage and only the one I clicked is soloed. Same works for the mute, as well as for the arm, arm automation, and monitor control. But wait, that is not everything. So all the continuous controls that you have, let's say the gain, would always follow your mouse cursor exactly to the point. But what if you wanted a finer change? You can just hold Alt now and the movement of your mouse is going to be translated into a finer movement of the parameter. Same goes for the panning. And you can see that when I'm not holding Alt, it's really fast. And with Alt, everything moves with finer increments. And in our sequencer, I wanted to show you a couple of things. The timeline in the MIDI blocks no longer starts always from one. That happens only when loop is engaged. Now by default, they share their timeline with the sequencer. Alongside that, another type of block that shares the timeline with the sequencer is going to be the automation block. You can see that if I move this automation block, the numbers in the editor perfectly follow the sequencer. And the final feature of this video is going to be the block Z order. Right now, if you have any audio block overlapping another one, you get this blue triangle. If you click it, you will see all the blocks overlapping the one where you click the blue triangle and you can select which one is going to be on top. So if I selected that one, that one is on top. You see that? I click it again, select the other one. That one is on top now. 
So if I had three or four more blocks, one on top of another, I would always have this blue triangle that I can click and always select what's going to be on top. With this, we wanted to make the control over overlapping blocks more flexible and allow users to better control the order of all overlapping blocks. That's it for this video. If you want to see the whole list of new features, changes and bug fixes, you can check it out in the release notes at soundbridge.io. Have fun using Soundbridge.